Hey everyone, Dave here. This mini lecture is on why is carbon so important. Um, to start this, I'm actually not going to address carbon as such. I'm actually just going to talk about some uh, definitions. So the first definition that I want you to get a handle on is this one here. And that is that uh, organic chemistry is the study of the chemistry of carbon and hydrogen. What you'll uh, find as you uh, progress through your chemistry studies is you'll see there's basically three main branches of chemistry. And they're called organic, inorganic and physical. So basically uh, physical chemistry is kind of like the physics of chemistry. And it deals with physical properties of chemicals etc. One branch of chem is organic chem and uh, as you can see by the definition here it's uh, interested actually in just two elements really or derivations thereof and then all the rest is put into the other box called inorganic chemistry so it's anything in means not in this instance so inorganic chem is just the study of all the chemistry that's not organic chem basically so there's something special then about these two elements and in particular it's the element carbon that's really really special but uh, I, I just want to progress a little bit further with these definitions so I just want to make it clear to you that something whilst carbon is very special something like uh, carbon dioxide is by definition not an organic chemical as you can see here it satisfies the requirement of having carbon but it certainly doesn't have the satisfy the requirement of having hydrogen so therefore it's not an organic chemical whereas this uh, compound here methane CH4 is definitely an organic uh, chemical because it satisfies those cri two criteria that it contains both carbon and hydrogen interestingly of course all life on the planet is actually based on organic chem and organic of course refers to living things so hence the name organic chem actually originally um, all the organic chemistry was uh, but everyone thought it was just the chemistry of life but uh, then people actually started synthesizing so-called organic chemicals in the laboratory and the definition shifted somewhat when you're considering now the chemistry of life itself whilst it is uh, organic chem I guess in a way it's a sub-branch of organic chem and people start thinking about it as being biochemistry so in this lecture series um, I will touch on some biochemistry as well just at the very end okay so hydrogen's not really the most interesting of elements um, it only has a valence of one but there's something very special about carbon because it has a valence of four and therefore it can form four bonds with uh, other atoms and uh, therefore it has the potential to make a lot of different combinations think of it a, a little bit like you've got a Lego set and uh, if you just had a Lego set where you could only join one thing to another just with one connection you're not going to be able to make anything particularly interesting but the moment you've got something like four connections you can really get to and uh, make some really really interesting constructs so carbon has got that advantage I guess the uh, other advantage it has is that the uh, uh, bonds between carbon atoms are very very strong in fact um, a classic example as I pointed out here would be something like diamond it's made of pure carbon and it's just simply carbon atoms joined together by these very strong covalent bonds in fact diamond of course is the uh, hardest material that we know of so uh, you can see that those bonds between carbon atoms and indeed between carbon and other non-metallic uh, elements forming these covalent bonds can be quite strong indeed and of course that brings me to my next point that means that not only have we got uh, construction materials that allow us to form quite complex uh, types of molecules uh, because the bonds are strong it means you can make very very long ones and that means you can make uh, very very large ones so in a sense actually when you look at something like diamond in one way you could regard that as just being one very very large molecule so carbon because of all of those properties lends itself to 
to uh, form a wide array of uh, tough, strong and very, very large molecules. But there's more. Carbon also can form not only single bonds with other atoms, it can also form double and triple bonds with other atoms. And this means that it gives you an even greater versatility. So again, instead of having uh, a box of Lego blocks where you can only join uh, things together in fours, uh, because there's four different uh, connections, if you like, uh, you've actually got now a box of Lego blocks where there's uh, combinations of two and three as well. So you get a terrific uh, variety of different types of compounds. Here's a classic, a couple of classic examples here. Uh, and as I said, um, here, if we look at this one, for example, this is definitely an organic compound because it's got carbon and hydrogen in it. Uh, but this one actually happens to also have oxygen, which, as you know, is a non-metallic element. And so this, these are quite strong bonds here as well. And so not only can you build up just heaps of different carbon combinations, you can also incorporate a number of different elements uh, giving rise to many, many different uh, molecules. Here's another one here. In this case, we've got a carbon-carbon double bond. And as I've said here, you can find that in uh, things like uh, sugars, for example. They contain those carbon-carbon double bonds. <coughs> and there's just a thing showing you there. Okay, carbon can form single, double, and uh, triple bonds, as I just said. Now, what that means is, as I said, is that you can actually get quite uh, large molecules uh, based on carbon and uh, covalent bonding. Here's a classic example. Everyone's heard of DNA. Um, the DNA molecules in your cells are actually about a millimetre long. Now, that might not seem like much, but uh, you have a think about it. Your cells are actually around about 20 microns in diameter. Right, so that's uh, 20 by 10 to the minus 6 of a metre. And um, you're then fitting something that's a whole one metre long into something that small, about, what's that, about uh, 10,000 10, times la uh, smaller. So the, the molecules themselves, my point is, are extremely long but extremely thin. And people actually... Once uh, I, I read somewhere where someone likened the DNA molecules inside cells to being like having one strand of dry spaghetti which stretched from Brisbane to Cairns and it was that delicate. Well, it was that long, but DNA molecules are tough enough to actually hold together over that distance and certainly a strand of spaghetti wouldn't be. When you unpack what's actually going on inside a DNA molecule, this is the famous double helix here, you get this sort of arrangement. Um, some of this you mightn't be familiar with. These little uh, uh, angles here actually represent carbon atoms. So everywhere where you see a little angle on here, it's actually a carbon atom. There's so many of them just packed into this little area just here that it's more efficient to actually just write them as as structures rather than write all the atoms in. There are these so-called bases that sit between, uh, actually I'll take a step backwards, we have a backbone here of what, what is um, sugar and phosphate and then we have these uh, bases which point into the middle of the molecule here and they themselves are quite complex uh, compounds as well. In between those bases we've in this diagram here, they've drawn some H's. This is actually supposed to represent hydrogen bonding. So those bases are actually um, stuck together, if you like, by hydrogen bonds, the same hydrogen bonds that stick water molecules together. And as you know, you can pull water molecules apart pretty easily, as you can with these strands of DNA by virtue of these hydrogen bonds. And they can reform as well. So this molecule is quite versatile. It can move the strands apart and put them back together again. And it needs to do that because it needs to replicate, uh, make copies of itself, and it can only do that by unwinding. Okay, next uh, mini lecture is going to be on uh, one specific group of uh, carbon compounds called the hydrogens. I'll see you then.